Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Oh yeah, we're painting again and I'm going to introduce you, if you have not seen this before, a technique called the wipeout method. This is a technique to start an oil painting without drawing by wiping out light. So uh, what I've done to start with is I've uh, painted this canvas with burnt umber and then I'm going to use a lint-free cloth to wipe out the light. So let's uh, <laughs> see how I do. Because what I'm trying to do is uh, start a painting. I'm going to be doing, I'll, I'll put the picture up of what I'm going to try and paint. And hopefully this will get me started because uh, it's quite daunting when you have a, a complex painting to do like this. Where do you start? Do you draw? Do you block in? Do you... Who knows what you're supposed to do? <laughs> There's so many ways, and this is one of them. So I, I've got my picture on a canvas next to me, and I've pushed it back a bit so I can see the whole thing. And then, uh, I've, like I said, I've covered the entire canvas with burnt umber. Burnt umber. Now I've used a water mixable oil here. Um, because then I can take it off with water. <laughs> now, could you use traditional oil? Yes, you could do. And would a rag work without any paint thinner on? Probably. You could probably wipe it off anyway. Um, but I know I definitely <laughs> will be able to wipe this off with water. And uh, there's not much paint on there really. It's a thin coat. And... Uh, it is mixed a little bit with water so it's been thinned so there'll only be a, uh, a thin coat of oil and after I've wiped it all off I'll just leave it to dry and then uh, I'll uh, have another crack at it so I dip my uh, lint free cloth in some water and then uh, go for it <laughs> wipe away and uh, I'm aiming for the highlights, aiming for the lightest lights. So one way to do that is to squint your eyes a bit. If you squint your eyes, you can see like shapes instead of detail. And detail is a problem. <laughs> so you can go for shapes. And what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the top of the roof. So the, the slant of the roof and I'm squinting down and seeing that triangular shape of the sky because that's what I'm trying to achieve uh, to get this started. A lot of the times it's not perfect <laughs> and, uh, and I use my brush to measure like that so I can measure where the, uh, the light that's hitting this side of the building which I liked um, it's the main focus of this painting really the light hitting that building and then reflecting in the water so I thought I'll try and get that as close to the correct position as possible to give myself a chance give myself a uh, better, better chance than if I was just going for this as a painting just going for it straight up and I didn't fancy drawing I, I didn't want to get the chalk out and draw it out because it's just too much so I thought this is a good way this will get me started and then uh, I can work from here so like I said you just dip it in water and wipe away wipe the paint away this um, would work on board as well probably work better on board because you can wipe it off a bit cleaner but I want to do this on canvas because I've made myself a load of canvases <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm really pushing myself at the moment actually I'm, uh, I'm trying to get past my own personal limitations <laughs> I'm, and I'm really enjoying it as well really powering, powering on it's something I've always wanted to focus on and uh, 
to be honest, for a while I was telling myself I haven't got the time. I just don't have the time. I'm too tired after work to paint, but I'm ignoring that thought now. <laughs> I'm not going to uh, do little sketches all the time. Well, I'm going to, but I'm going to make sure I do paintings, bigger paintings. Uh, if you're wondering, this canvas is a 18 by 24 canvas. So there we go. Get get that reflection in. This is the big shape. This is the main part of the painting, like I said. So get that wiped off straight away. I started to quite enjoy this actually. <laughs> I've uh, I've only tried this once um, a long time ago, and uh, I made a right hash of it, so I gave it up. And uh, but then I've been learning more about Rembrandt, and uh, I've got these I've got a lot of these books on uh, the techniques of the masters. And I, f and, I, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to revisit this because there must be something in it. If Rembrandt did it, if the, uh, the Dutch masters did it, there must be something there. <laughs> it must help you. And I think it does because you're looking at the big shapes. You're not looking at detail. <laughs> like I said earlier, detail is a killer. And uh, it really is because if you start piddling around with detail and not focus on the overall composition and the overall shape that you want then uh, your painting is going to struggle <laughs> and I can say that from experience actually because I've done that many a time where I've just started painting people and uh, windows and stuff when I've done like a, uh, a complex scene and then uh, I sit back and have a look and realize that things aren't the right scale. And uh, and then I end up just giving up because I've gone so far with detail that it's just a waste of time because you need to keep yourself held back. So I'm uh, using my reference picture to get the feel of these angles quite a lot of buildings in this there's cars buildings and uh, all sorts and it's not the sort of painting <laughs> that I could do in uh, half an hour or an hour not a chance this is going to take quite a while and uh, and also if you've been following my uh, Facebook posts I've been posting this painting that I'm working on it's a uh, it's a bit of a Turner um, inspired painting really because when I was in London and I was admiring Turner's work again <laughs> I always admire it I think it's fantastic to be honest and, uh, and I thought oh, I need to start pushing myself and do something like that <laughs> and I've been doing that recently I've been recording it but I've already done about an hour and a half and I'm nowhere near finished. I'm waiting for it to dry at the moment because I want to do some glazes. I've filmed it. I don't I don't know what I can do with it. Maybe I can edit it down a little bit or something because I don't know how many more hours I'm going to spend on it. <laughs> I'll have to think about that. Cuz I know um I know on YouTube these really long videos that they're not really um, interesting for people. I think it's, it can get a bit boring, and I think maybe only a few people would want to see it. So I might put the unedited version somewhere else. I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. But yeah, I'm, I keep looking back at my picture, looking at this. This is a, a photo I've taken, by the way. And uh, I, I don't like using other people's photos because you don't know the copyright on them. And uh, I know for a fact I've got the copyright on this one, so 
<laughs> I'm not going to get into trouble and uh, people are getting into trouble on YouTube because of uh, copyright infringement They've, they might have even used a site that that the pictures on there have, are supposedly copyright free but then they're not <laughs> so I don't want to get stung on anything like that so I'm using my own now luckily my uh, camera on my phone is amazing <laughs> so I'm using that tool as a measuring device again I'm not perf perfect at this um, measuring yet I'm just trying to get it about right because once I've got it about right I can make these minor changes later so yeah um, I keep sitting back as well sitting back having a look quick measure using the brush as a measuring device it's quite a fast way of doing it some people use um, a ruler or a pencil <laughs> or a brush like me or a uh, proportion divider you know, whatever you can use to help you it, it's good I find this the quickest so just looking where that chimney was so the good thing about this technique as well is if you make a mistake you can just brush in a little bit of color <laughs> um, so you, you're not really 100% committed all the way through and uh, you could use this if you're designing a painting as well you could just put in your brown and then uh, wipe out the lights and design your own composition and you can move things around like I said and change it I think uh, the fact that once you get used to painting and you realize you can change things and, and do be aware the masters the great painters of the past when they x-ray their paintings they see changes they so you know they're only human they uh, started somewhere so if you've never done this before maybe you should try it maybe you should have a go um, start somewhere have a go if it's an interest like me and you're interested in old-fashioned techniques and how they used to do it then why not I haven't had the luxury of going to art school or being trained by a master painter <laughs> so I've got to be the master as well as the painter and to be honest you all everybody has to be their own master and their own well you've got to be your own painter <laughs> unless you get someone to paint for you <laughs> I'll tell you what to do, now you do it. A bit, a bit like what they used to do. Get all the trainees doing all the, the rubbishy bits and then the, the master comes in and paints the face and hands and then walks off again. <laughs> yeah, don't don't be afraid when you're painting. If you're a beginner and you haven't painted very many paintings then don't worry just keep at it keep painting don't be afraid of bodging it up because there's not a painter out there that hasn't bodged it up <laughs> <laughs> they might pretend that they've never bodged it up so no I'm, I'm a perfect painter I've never made any mistakes mm, yeah right <laughs> part of learning so I'm looking at the ground down here it's quite light squinting my eyes and looking at the grass and it's quite light grass um, not worried about the color 
this is another reason why this is quite a good technique because you don't worry about color you're just worrying about light and dark and uh, that takes away some of the uh, thoughts in the back of your head oh how am I gonna mix that color <laughs> what's that green hmm So one of the reasons why I like making these videos is because I know there's people out there like just like me learning and trying to get better and uh, and sometimes it's easier to see someone else doing it rather than just reading about it and then going for it sometimes it's good to see someone else having a go and then you get an idea so I always think it'd be good to put a video on just in case there's someone else like me itching to try it but it's a bit unsure of what to do so sometimes I use my fingers and uh, I spread my fingers to the width of whatever it is and then do a quick measure like that but you can see it's starting to take shape it's starting to appear out of this brown there's something here you can see there's a building there you can see there's a house on the right you can start to see things and then uh, what I'll do is when all this dries I plan on uh, <laughs> I noticed a bit of light hitting some of the little buildings and the fence. Yeah, what I plan on doing next is to start adding colour. There's a car there. <laughs> That's my car. Done. <laughs> like I said, you don't worry about things if you see a vehicle just put in a mark just so you can see where the lights hitting it and the fence windows just dip my uh, lint free cloth in a bit of water the reason I'm using a lint free cloth you know I went all out I had some vouchers for uh, for this um, DIY store and uh, and I thought hmm interesting <laughs> and I bought all sorts of stuff and I've been using it for uh, my paintings so I got these lint free cloths and they don't leave any lint on your paintings if you was using like a, a cotton rag or something it might leave bits on your picture which would be a bit annoying <laughs> bit annoying so there's bits of light hitting there on and there's like grass along the uh, water there and it's quite light and there's a uh, a lamp post here and I'm just trying to work out whereabouts it is <laughs> so I can't really rely on my shapes exactly because some of them are not perfect yet <laughs> so a quick measure work out where that lamppost really is and then quick go down into the measuring the size measuring the angle of that house So you can get really strict with this actually <laughs> once you've got the basic shapes in you can start getting a bit stricter and uh, make sure you're blocking in correctly and that's what you want to do spend a bit of time always spend a bit more time than what I do because uh, I should really spend more time but I wanted to demonstrate it and don't really want a really long demo <laughs> 
I do try and forget I've got a camera on me, but it's quite difficult to forget. But what this should do, the idea of this video, is to give you an idea. That's what all my videos are for, really. Give you ideas. Like I said, you become your own master. And you've got to uh, work at it practice enjoy it though don't get stressed out if it don't go right because you can always do another one I remember uh, somebody getting extremely stressed out once <laughs> it wasn't me um, I was teaching at the time when I was teaching the wet and wet I had this class and uh, and there was a chap there, he got really, really stressed. <laughs> I remember getting annoyed once actually when I think about it. And uh, I just kind of just thought, right, I'm giving up today. I'll come back to this tomorrow. And that's what I did. And I, and I came back fresh. And I was okay. But I did used to make the errors of piddling piddling on the details because you a lot of artists say a lot of art teachers they go oh don't spend too much time on detail don't do detail you don't need to mess around with your detail but <laughs> I, don't, I never believe them and uh, let's go back onto that I don't believe them I always think hmm no, I think you need to do detail, otherwise the painting is not going to look good. And then your brain starts fooling you. <laughs> so, that's the end of this video. I hope it helps. It, it just shows you that you don't need much detail to show a picture. And hopefully, when you look at this, you'll see buildings and a reflection. And that's all I need to start with and it does say that to me and uh, so yeah I um, hope this helps you I hope you found it interesting and I'll see you at another one cheers bye